We'll return after these messages. Hey everybody, I just want to let you guys know that you might want to stay tuned at the end of the video because there's a special message to all of you from GOATS. Anyway, keep it creepy, enjoy the video. Back before Nickelodeon played cartoons 24-7, before Cartoon Network was even a thing. Heck, back before Cartoon Network was even Boomerang, before it became Cartoon Network, before Toon Disney, and long before all the Plus, Max, Deluxe, Prime, and streaming services, kids had to wait until the weekend to see cartoons. I mean, admittedly, most weekdays there were two to four cartoons on TV around 3 p.m. or 7 a.m., but if you wanted to just spend the entirety of a morning until afternoon just relaxing and watching your favorite animated classics, there was only one place to be and one time to be there. Saturday mornings around 8 to 9 a.m., right in front of your TV. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back to Macabre Gorham Labs presents School of Boredom, a showcase of things likely forgotten. My name is Bats and I hope you'll join me today for the premiere of Season 2 with Lesson 201, Saturday Morning Cartoons, Cereal Spoons at the Ready. Today's lesson takes us all the way back to the golden year of 1955, because it looks like Marty McFly isn't the only one with unfinished business in the past. During this year, kids would be greeted on Saturday mornings with none other than the Mighty Mouse Playhouse. The airing of this program at that time would mark the first airing and mark the beginning of the iconic Saturday morning cartoons programming blocks most of us older kids would come to know and love. However, there is actually a dark side to this super memorable and fondly remembered Saturday morning cartoons programming system. Before we move forward, I should probably point out that this very well could ruin Saturday morning cartoons and any fond memories it has with you, but more on that shortly. For now though, let's talk about my favorite part, the history. So Saturday morning cartoons were not, by far, the first cartoons. In fact, most early cartoons aired in primetime slots because they were meant more for adults than children. That's not to say there was no children's programming or children's cartoons at that time, it's just most animated programs from that era were in fact designed for adults. But that will be covered in another video. This one's about Saturday morning cartoons. There is a lot more to it than that, but we aren't going to get into all the involved shows, methods, stories, styles, or specific histories in this one, because most of them will be covered individually and in-depth in their own videos down the line. Hey Bats. Yeah, Goat? So you'd like me to hand a week forward, so I've got a fun fact for our viewers. Oh, awesome. What's up? The earliest recorded American animation was called Humorous Phases of Funny Faces, and it dates all the way back to 1906. Oh, whoa, I always thought it was Gertie the Dinosaur, a short by Windsor McKay in 1914. And it will get its own video too, but today you have to tell our audience about Saturday mornings for children before the internet. Okay, okay, I just really love this topic. So anyway, somewhere around 1955, Saturday morning cartoons would feature a mixture of cartoons and children's programming. Most of the cartoons that aired were either reruns of the primetime animated sitcoms that aired, such as The Flintstones, Beanie and Cecil, The Jetsons, Top Cat, Woody Woodpecker, Pink Panther, Looney Tunes, and Merry Melodies, not to mention Tom and Jerry. I should make a note here that there are actually two versions of Tom and Jerry, and one of them was in fact not a cat and mouse duo, but instead a duo similar to Laurel and Hardy or Andy and Amos. We're going to dive a little more into the titles and blocks specifically in just a minute, but if you remember, I did say that this video does have a dark side, and that dark side actually has an important place in the history of Saturday mornings. 
You see, it's true, most of your beloved Saturday morning cartoons were nothing more than glorified commercials. Do not assume that children's hosts were innocent in this, because their shows were even worse at this trope. Let's see, I have a list here of some of the shows and shameless product placement, so let's take a look at it and see what kind of placement was used. Okay, so it looks like Captain Kangaroo, The Mickey Mouse Club, Howdy Doody, Welcome Home, Soupy Sales, HR Puffin Stuff, and JP Patches, an MGL favorite, were all guilty of using their influence and fan admiration to sell products to kids by promoting them on air directly to the audience. Anyway, next it says, The Flintstones, Top Cat, and a couple others were doing that too. And in the case of the Flintstones, they even promoted Winston cigarettes. Because like I said, originally these shows were aimed at adults. Later in the 1970s through 1980s, people caught on that kids like cartoons and toys. They figured out they could make and sell toys based on cartoons. Also, they could specifically make cartoons in order to create these toys. Kids would then ask their parents to buy the toys based on these cartoons. They would also know which toys to buy based on what toys were presented in the cartoons based on toys. I know that sounds complicated, but trust me, we'll cover it all eventually. But this era is where we would get the best of the Saturday morning cartoons. With its dedicated blocks and specific lineups, it was really a matter of preference. Or if you were really couch savvy, you could channel surf between all of your Saturday morning favorites. This is also the era where every single company wanted a piece of the pie. So, those of us that were kids back then considered ourselves spoiled, at least on Saturdays. From Fox to Disney. Hey kids, go here. The portion of the video that Bats is about to discuss needs a little exposition. Back then, Disney didn't own everything. So Fox, Disney, ABC, NBC, CBS, your local networks, and the rest were their own entities, and all of them were at war for your attention. That being said, we now take you back to Bats and your totally rad school awarded video. From Fox to Disney, there were so many choices, each with a different flavor to suit any kid's cartoon needs. There were so many that we're only going to list them by name here, but I love this topic so much I'm going to cover as many as I can in future uploads. However, it's worth noting that some of these lineups didn't actually have names. There was ABC Saturday Mornings, ABC Kids, Fox Kids, 4Kids TV, Pax Kids, Disney's One Saturday Morning on ABC, Kids WB, CW for Kids, Toon's Eye, One Magnificent Morning, Vortex, PBS Kids, and there were a bunch of other kids lineups on Saturday mornings throughout the years, such as ABC, NBC, PBS, and CBS, but none of these ones had actual names. Within these lineups were just about any cartoon that was made usually on their respective networks or channels, but around the 1980s, shows were made specifically to be Saturday morning cartoons. These cartoons were, of course, made to entice you to buy more toys. Buy more cards! By the time the 1990s rolled around, we knew that cartoons were not only made to sell you toys, but more often than not, some cartoons were made after the toys released. It also became a war between rival companies to have the best program slash toy matchup ever, so all the airwaves were flooded with so many different lineups targeted at kids. It wouldn't be too long after this that we would see the ultimate rise of Cartoon Network, then Boomerang, then the Disney Channel, and of course, the always amazing Nickelodeon. Even though Nickelodeon had been in the children's entertainment game the longest, it wouldn't be until the early 2000s that they would focus on full-time, non-toddler kids programming. So, as you can see, there was a time when kids had to wait for their own entertainment. And yes, before you comment about all of the stuff I did not mention, things like the Disney Afternoon and After School Specials and other afternoon lineups, those were not Saturday morning cartoons, but they are possibly topics for future videos. And with that, we've come to the end of another School of Boredom lesson. Uh, uh not quite yet, Bats. We haven't even told the fans some of our favorite cartoons. Oh, how could I forget? The best part. No idea, Bats, but here we go. 
Some of my favorite cartoons were Scooby-Doo, Where Are You, Richie Rich, The Snorks, and Albert and the Chipmunks, to name a very few. How about you, Bats? Oh, I also love to watch Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Along with the Jetsons, the Wuzzles, Tom and Jerry, and of course, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's better. Are we done now with the School of Boredom? Yes, wait, no. Before we go, I want to send a shout out to Moon Media, Childhood Network, and Rinse Repeat, who have mock Saturday morning lineups right here on YouTube done in 90 style and 3 to 8 hour videos, complete with commercials. We'll have links in the description so you guys can check out their channels for yourself. And if you love retro cartoons as much as we do, be sure to tell them that Bats from Macabgram Lab sent you. And with that, we finally come to the end of this School of Boredom lesson. My name is Bats, and I've been your host today as we took a look at the history of Saturday morning cartoons, Cereal Spoons at the Ready, with Lesson 201, the premiere of School of Boredom Season 2. Be sure to check back next time because you never know what we have in store. And as usual, think for yourselves, be excellent to each other, and of course, keep it creepy. Watch out for those PSAs. I'll get you. One quick thing before the end of our video. I just wanted to let all of our fans know that they will not be seeing me in very many videos in the future. While I do love all of our fans, I will be focusing more on the business side of Macabre Labs. However, I will be popping in from time to time to help out Bats and write a few scripts. Even though I won't be around as much, Bats will also be working with some collaborators in the future, so make sure you check out for that. And again, thank you all for your support, and as Bass would say, think for yourselves, be excellent to each other, and of course, keep it creepy. Hey, thanks for checking out our video. If you'd like to see more content from us, click this link right up here. If you'd like to check out one of our partner channels, you can click this link right over here. Either way, we hope you click subscribe and like and check us out for more content and don't forget to turn on notifications.